August is normally a quiet month in tech, but not this year, as Thursday the 8th of August 2024 saw the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 launch. I told you this was coming. Let me give you the story of what we know about this new board and the RP2350 processor. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. Back in May on my live stream, I told you about the Raspberry Pi's CEO hinting at a successor to the RP2040. We now know that that is the RP2350, a faster processor with twice as much RAM. This will drive the Pico 2 board, which is available generally on back order at the moment, and a Pico 2W by the end of the year. Third party manufacturers boards have RP2350 boards out and available to order right now. Um, I'll bring you the experience of using these boards and some projects with them in the coming weeks. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year. And I appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. What's the headline here? Well, we've got a new Pico 2 board coming. Um, it's certainly on back order and we should have it very soon. And it's based on a RP2350 chip. Now that chip has a lot of new capability. Um, it's got higher clock speed. It's up to 150 megahertz. Uh, it's got twice as much RAM as we used to have. So we've got 520 kilobytes of um, SRAM on board. Um, it's got some new security features, including things like secure boot and uh, some upgraded to the interfaces. So we have 12 PIOs now and a new HSTX peripheral for high speed data transfers. Now, this doesn't seem to be just one chip anymore, an RP2040 like we used to have. The RP2350 seems to come in four varieties. So we've got, first of all, two sizes, the QFN60 or the QFN80. These two then give you two options on those, whether they have flash on board or no flash on board. Uh, if you've got flash on board, it's two meg. And the real difference between those two is the size of the, ch of the chip uh, physically. The QFN 60s are 7x7 seven seven millimeters, QFN 80s are 10x10 millimeters, and that additional size is really giving you additional GPIO ports. So going from uh, 30 GPIO pads up to 48 GPIO pads, plenty of connectivity. So our new processor, the RP2350, has actually jumped the speed up from where we were at 133 megahertz on uh, two cores up to 150 megahertz on two cores. Now that's a little bit of improvement. Um, actually, I think the Cortex M33 is actually more performance as well. So I think we may see better performance generally. The other big thing on here, I guess, is we've actually got a true floating point unit now for doing single point mass. So this is the ARM single precision floating point unit. Uh, included, whereas before it was pretty much just an onboard library to actually simulate floating point calculations. And there's DSP support as well, digital signal processing. So that might be really useful for computer graphics, image processing, um, speech processing or recognition uh, use cases. So quite a lot of potential in that space to ha have a look at. One of the things I was looking for on this new processor is more RAM. You might remember I was doing some work with a TFT screen recently and I had was having issues because I didn't have enough space to actually create a frame buffer within the amount of RAM available on a Pico. The RP2350 has twice as much RAM and 520 kilobytes of RAM. That's great, but I was looking for more. But actually there is more because we also now have a QSPI interface for PS RAM. So we have the ability to put additional RAM on there. Now a Pico 2 is actually only going to come with 520 kilobytes of SRAM on board. That'll be it. 
Now, some of the other manufacturers out there have created boards that have got more on them. I've seen some boards out there advertised for sale right now with 8 megafram, which now that really makes it uh, much easier to work with frame buffers and to do some of the clever graphics stuff. Well, I said in the headlines, we've got some upgraded interfaces. Well, first of all, we've got some parity. So we've got the same two UARTs, two SPIs, two I2C interfaces. The number of uh, PWM channels available to us has gone up. We used to have 16, we've now got 24. Nice. It's USB 1.1 on the Pico 2 board. And then how about PIOs? Well, we used to have eight PIOs and they have inserted more than that. We've got now 12 PIOs. As far as I can see, that's basically adding an additional block of um, PIOs. Um, the PIOs now have support for more than 32 GPIOs, which is good because we've now got more than 32 BLP GPIOs, though that is limited that each block can only actually uh, handle 32 at a time. There are a few new assembly instructions for PIO as well, um, but I, as far as I can see, it's got the same memory limit um, per block as we used to have on, on the RP2040. We've also got a new peripheral, the HSTX, which is a high speed serial to transmit stream um, for data. So it can basically stream data to up to eight GPIO pins at a time. It's limited to which pins can be supported, um, but that's still quite a good throughput. And in fact, the maximum throughput on this is 150 megahertz. Something I wasn't expecting to see on the processor was a RISC-V architecture. So actually on boot, you can now uh, transition from using ARM cores to use RISC-V cores using Hazard 3. Um, that's, that's really interesting, but that would seem to change a huge amount because that changes your entire software architecture. Um, so you're using the RP2350 completely different model and mode. Um, exciting. Whether I will choose to do that or not ever, I don't know. I, I need to think about this one a bit. So from a software point of view, of course, we've got C and C++ SDK support, um, and there's a new version of that out, 2.0.0. We've, of course, got MicroPython support and CircuitPython support. Added to that, we've now got Rust. And I've been wanting to play with Rust and try it out for a while. So actually having Rust support, that could be quite fun. We've also got some additional sort of third party um, um, capabilities. So there is a trusted firmware M uh, certification and support so we can use that architecture. There's a support for secure boot. So you can actually have um, your uh, firmware uh, signed and verify that your Pico can only actually run your signed firmware. Now that reduces quite a lot of attacks and actually is a quite a nice architecture. And Google have paired up with uh, Raspberry Pi to give Pigweed SDK capability on the RP2350. So that will be exciting too. Um, so that gets into things like um, the Nest uh, thermometer and, and those sorts of capabilities. So the new Pico 2 board is going to have 520 kilobytes of SRAM and 4 meg of flash. Now I can only find it on back order at the moment in the UK which is a shame so I've got a little bit of time to wait for it but there are other boards that are actually already available. There is a promise though as well from Raspberry Pi that we will have a Pico 2W with Wi-Fi capability by the end of the year. Presumably that will be available to order on back order by the end of the year rather than actually out and in my hands. But we'll see. Now, the third party board manufacturers for RP2350s is actually quite extensive and there's quite a lot of boards available to buy today. So I just put up a few of these suppliers are out there that I could find and there's a the hell of a lot of them. So there's some really interesting boards and I already have uh, one or two on order. So I will bring you some of my experience and, and playing with the RP2350 boards really, really soon. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on an RP2350 board and indeed the Pico 2 board very soon. 
I can't see me entirely dropping my Pico uh, usage yet, not at least until we get the Pico 2 board out. Once I can get my hands on these boards, I can assess a little more on backwards compatibility. From what I've seen, though, it looks like there's going to be fairly good backwards compatibility, which is great. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your helping me getting me there, and indeed, I'd love to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button, and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.